In this video, we'll be going over the brute force recursive approach for Unique Paths 2. So a robot is located at the top left corner of a m times n grid marked start in the diagram, so here. The robot can only move either down or right at any point in time. The robot is trying to reach the bottom right corner of the grid marked as the finish in the diagram below. Now consider if some ob obstacles are added to the grid. How many unique paths would there be? So we have the obstacle here. This means the robot cannot um, step into the cell with an obstacle. An obstacle and space is marked as the 1 and 0 re um, respectively in the grid. So the obstacle is going to be a 1 and any of the other cells is going to be equal to 0. So in this case, we, uh, we have to find the total number of unique ways to reach from the top left corner to the bottom right corner while avoiding obstacles and avoiding going out of bound. So the total number of ways is 2 because we go this way downward and then this way downward to reach 2. Now let's go over the dot process. We will need to keep track of our current position of the robot. We will need to keep track of the current position of robot, which we will denote as RC. So initially RC is going to be at 0, 0 because we're at the top left corner. Then at each of the cells, we have two choices. We can either go rightward or downward. When we reach the bottom right corner, we have found one possible way to reach the, the star here. Um, we should know that every time we go out of bound or we step into an obstacle, the number of ways is going to be equal to zero. Or the number of paths will be equal to zero. If the robot steps out of bound, or steps into an obstacle, the total number, the, the number of unique paths will be equal to zero. And this, in this case, we have two choices. We can go either rightward or downward. This means we will need to find the total number of paths on both choices. Now let's go over the answer. So we're going to implement the recursive approach. Now what parameters do we need? It's going to be R, the current row of the robot, and C, the co current column of the robot. And then we're going to have our obstacle grid, which, which we'll just call grid. The input grid, and then we'll also have the M, the number of rows and end the number of columns. Now what's the base case? If the robot is out of bound, if RC is out of bound, or grid RC is equal to one, that means the robot step into an obstacle, then the number of paths is going to be equal to zero. So we're going to return zero. Then if robots, if, if RC is at the bottom right corner, this means we have found a valid path. Then we can return one. We have found one path. So in each of the recursive call, we're going to recursively find the number of paths by going rightward, of going rightward. So if we're going rightward, that means our column increases to C plus one. And then recursively find the number of paths of going downward, number of so going downward. Now we're going downward. We're going to increase our um, row. Then we can return the sum of the two recursive calls because we want to take the total number of paths from going rightward and the total number of paths of going downward. Now let's go over the time and space complexity. So the time complexity is equal to O of 2 to the m plus n, where m n are the number of rows and columns. This is because in each of the recursive call, we have two choices and with a depth of m plus n.
Now the space complexity is equal to O of n plus n. This is the recursive call stack memory. Now let's go over the code. Now we'll first create our recursive method, keeping track of our current row and column, which initially start at the top left corner, so it's, it's going to be 0, 0. And then our input grid, and then the number of rows in the input grid, and the number of columns in the input grid. One thing you want to make sure is if the input grid is empty. Oh, the input, the input grid is never empty, so this will not er will not give us an error the, since the input grid is never empty. So let's create our method, keeping track of current column, uh, current row, current column, input grid, the number of rows, and the number of columns. So if now we first need to check if RC is out of bounds. So if R is greater than or equal to M, or C is greater to N, or if the current cell has an obstacle, so grid RC is equal to one, then the number of paths is, is going to be zero because we have failed to find a path. Then if grid RC, actually, if, if RC is at the bottom right corner, we have found one path. So R is equal to M minus one and C is equal to M minus one. Then we found one possible path, so return one. Now we want to find the total number of paths of going first we want to go rightward so c plus one and the total number of paths of going downward so r plus one It's the, it's the method. So this solution is not efficient enough. So this proof for solution is not efficient enough. We will need to optimize it using the memorization approach in the next video. So this approach is not efficient enough. And we will need to optimize it using memorization. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below as we move toward the memorization approach of unique paths too.